Is there a new player on the market that the Titans could be interested in? Let's talk about it here on Titans Today. I am your host, Jace Andrews, and this player, Cortland Sutton, well, maybe he's available. We'll tell you why that is, because, man, it's kind of an interesting time of the year. Voluntary workouts are starting, and Tom Pelissero had this tweet talking about Cortland Sutton, who did not report yesterday for the voluntary workouts as he is seeking a new contract. Now, obviously, he's going on his 10th starting quarterback in Denver. And, well, with only $2 million guaranteed on his contract, could the potential be there for him to be traded? And if so, would the Titans have interest in him? I kind of think they might. We'll talk about why here in just a moment. But before we get too far into this, let's start off with your initial thoughts. Do you want the Titans to trade for Cortland Sutton? Would that be something you would be interested in? If you are, type Y for yes. If you are not interested in that whatsoever, well, then that's pretty simple. Type in for no. Not going to hurt my feelings. I'm just kind of taking a poll here, seeing what y'all are thinking. Why for yes if you would like to see Sutton being traded to the Titans in for no. This depth chart is overall, I would say, solid. The thing is, it could be a lot better if you had a wide receiver three. Because I trust DeAndre Hopkins. I trust Calvin Ridley. I don't trust Traylon Burks. I know Nick westbrook had some pretty good times last year. Kyle Phillips the same way. But there's no wide receiver three here that I am like, oh yeah, maybe they could go and have that guy be a really good star in this upcoming year. That's just the way I see it. Now there is still talk of them drafting a wide receiver, and I think that's something we have to take into account because with the way the NFL is in its timeline, the draft is about a week away, a little bit over a week away. Maybe they're waiting to see and see if that happens, and then maybe they'll explore the wide receiver market in terms of trades and Maybe even to see if Odell, Odell Beckham Jr., maybe they sign him. Here's the picks that the Titans currently have as we sit right now. Obviously, these could change within the next couple days and even in the actual draft. Round one, pick seven. That first round pick's going to be huge. Round two, pick 38. Round four, pick 106. And then round five, the Minnesota pick from 146. Round six, pick 182. Uh, they traded their initial seventh round pick to the Browns for a lineman. And then you get your... Kevin Byer trade pick at number 242, round seven. And then the, of course, Legereus Sneed trade at 252, round seven. So you've got seven picks right now in total. But what about just trading for a wide receiver? What if that's the easier route to go? And I think that's why we have to mention Cortland Sutton. I think overall, the wide receivers who didn't report to the voluntary workouts, he is the most likely to actually be traded. Now, what would it cost? That's where I think is... Honestly, a really good fit. It's just a fourth-round pick, and you get Cortland Sutton. So in my mind, you're thinking this. Okay, let's say you don't want to go wide receiver in round two. Then past there, I don't know if I'm trusting any wide receiver to play as good as Cortland Sutton did, especially last year. Now, over his career, he's been a really, really solid wide receiver. 81 games, over 4,000 yards, nearing 300 receptions, He's not really had a bad year, quote-unquote. He's had slower years, but they haven't been bad. The big thing, though, you see that number, 24 touchdowns. Ten of them came last year. Ten. That's a wild number. Over half the touchdowns came from last year. And I think that's something that you have to think about because he was going through Russell Wilson last year, and obviously there was the ins and outs of the quarterback situation all the year. However, he was still solid. He had a couple of good touchdown catches. I know there was one specific one against the Patriots on Christmas Eve that he had an amazing catch on. There is something to be said about a guy producing in the season prior to you getting him, if that were to happen. I think that's something that both the Broncos are taking into note, and if they decide to extend him, if they decide to trade him away. But at the same time, Rand Carthen has to be understanding that, hey, Given I saw that last year, this guy can still compete. This guy can still perform. I would like to maybe see him on my squad. I think he would be a great fit for this year. And I think that's where the divide comes in. Because obviously with the draft, you're getting these rookies for four or five years. Cortland Sutton with the one-year deal, if they do trade him, you're going to have to extend him. Do the Titans have the money for that? Yeah, probably. Do they want to? Probably not as well. I don't think that's something they would like to do. However, if there's some sort of you know mix-up on the draft, you don't get the wide receiver you want, I think it kind of works out pretty well. The big question, though, is they have a pretty nice pick in the second round, number 38 overall. Would it be better to just get a wide receiver there or trade for Sutton? 
Now, you get four years of control, but obviously they're not going to have the proven effort and honestly the athletic ability that Sutton has probably created in the NFL. So that's something to certainly take into thought pro into the, th into the thought process. Now, obviously I'm putting my thought process to the test every day with prize picks, and you can too. You can get a $100 deposit match by going to prizepicks.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS, you'll get that $100. Now, I know the NBA playoffs are starting here today. I've got a pick in for tomorrow, though, with DeMar DeRozan and Trey Young. I've got more on Trey Young points, rebounds, and assists lists. I know that when the lights shine bright, Trey Young has been proven to do that all throughout his career, and you go back to his days at Oklahoma. DeMar DeRozan, 41.5 points, rebounds, and assists. I think he is going to do well when the lights shine bright, especially when the Bulls are going to call on him a lot. You can fade me if you don't like these. There's also plenty of other picks. I know there's a couple games tonight you can go put some in on. It's super easy to play. You choose two or more players. You pick more or less on their prize picks projections. Then you choose flex or power play. Now, obviously, that depends on how risky you're willing to take it there, but I like to play power play all the time. Go check it out at prizefix.com slash CLNS. It's the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. And I'm telling you, you're not going to be disappointed. They've got tons of different stat types, tons of different, tons of different sports. The best place to go play DFS. Once again, prizefix.com slash CLNS and using code CLNS, you're going to get that $100 deposit match. Quick withdrawals and easy gameplay is the number one reason why PrizePix should be your number one choice for daily fantasy sports. All right, draft options. So obviously, we talk about this as though the Titans are, you know, expected to draft wide receiver. I don't even know if we expect that. I think we expect them to get Joe Alt if he's there at number seven. Past that, question marks across the board. However, there are some obvious candidates for them to get in round two, pick number 38. The most obvious one to me is Troy Franklin. I've seen your comments, and I think he's, honestly, from what I've seen on social media and through the comments, he seems like a popular name. I think people really do like him and would love to see him on the Tennessee Titans. Now, we've been talking about him since the beginning of the offseason, and I think he's a good fit for a lot of different reasons. He's the wide receiver three vibe that I'm kind of going for. I think he fits that mold. He's never going to have to try and be a wide receiver one or two during the season. He can go in there, step into wide receiver three, work up his kind of, I guess, game, and then eventually, hopefully in the later part of the season, when it comes down to crunch time, he will be ready to go. This past year at Oregon, played really well. 1,300 yards, nearing 1,400 Average of 17.1. Did have nine drops, and that's the one concern with him is his drops is, let's just say, not great. I'm not going to say it's bad considering how many targets and he had 81 receptions still, but it's something to make sure that you take note of when looking at Franklin. He put up pretty good numbers throughout his entire college career. Obviously, it jumped off the board this past year, which, I mean, hey, rightfully so, it's your time. Go put it out there, show it. You got a pretty good team in Oregon. He did what he needed to do. 891 yards, though, the previous year is not too shabby as well with nine touchdowns. I think that would be, an, honestly, a solid year for a lot of college wide receivers. So the fact that that was the year prior to his year that he went off, hey, I will take that every single day. Plus, if you get Franklin, I mean, what a wide receiver room would that be? That would just be some wild thing. I mean, you talk about a wide receiver room with DeAndre Hopkins as your one. A guy who had 1,000 yards last year in Calvin Ridley and honestly was expected to do more in year number two. And you've got a guy who is expected to be a top wide receiver. And honestly, in most years, would probably be a first-round pick. But because of the way the wide receivers are this year, he's a second-round pick. This would absolutely be one of the top 10, at least, wide receiver rooms. I would probably argue even top five if you get Franklin. The same could probably also be said about Lad McConkey, my second guy, that I think would be a very good fit. Now, Lad, he's a very different receiver than Troy Franklin. Franklin is a lot about his speed and, well, kind of 50-50 balls. He gets up in the air a lot. The thing about Ladd, though, his footwork is top tier. If you've seen him doing shuttles, if you've seen him doing drills, he just is a freak of nature with his feet. He can move them quick. He can be able to honestly change on a dime, and I think that's the thing why people look at him and think he can be a top tier wide receiver in the NFL. Now, I know the stats aren't as crazy as some of the other players we have seen. I mean, 762 being your best year is nice, like I said. Uh, Troy Franklin, he had an 800-yard year. That's a really good year for a lot of receivers. Here you go, Ladd McConkey, 762. Nine touchdowns that year total. He played what he needed to do in a Georgia offense that was honestly just solid overall. I mean, it wasn't like he had to do too much. And he did what he needed to do. I think, again, we look at this pick and we think, okay, yeah, the stats aren't there. Maybe the stats aren't exactly what you would want from a wide receiver you're getting around to. However, with the NFL draft, it comes down to your ceiling a lot more times than not because it honestly is about, okay, 
How exactly can we make sure we pick the best guy, not only right now, but for our future? Rod McConkey, I think, fits both those builds. It would take some time, but given you have a wide receiver one, wide receiver two, not too shabby of a pick. Then the third one, Keon Coleman, the Florida State guy. Now, this is kind of crazy because Coleman had a first-round projection earlier. First round. I mean, I just honestly can't believe that, and now he is projected to be there at the later rounds or later round, later part of the second round. So that's something that we look here and think, okay, why would you not pay, take him? Well, there's a reason he went down. His combine was not the greatest. Pro day was not the greatest. He just played well wherever he went. Michigan State played well there. Then you went over to Florida State, played well there. It was not a place where I was like, ah, guess what? It's not a good, good fit. It, it works out well. So I'm excited to kind of see if that is a potential possibility. What's better, though, trading for Sutton or drafting a wide receiver? What do you think about this? Type T for trade, type D for draft. What would you rather do in this situation? Obviously, I think we know Joe Alt's going to be the pick at one. If that's not there, they'll trade back to get Olu Fashanu or uh, a different offensive lineman, maybe J.C. Latham. But I think that right now we know, do you trade for Sutton or do you draft one in the second round? Uh, now it's your time to get your thoughts in the comment section. We do appreciate you hanging out with us, and obviously with the draft coming up here in literally about a week. It's kind of crazy. I mean, we are flying through the offseason. Before we know it, the Titans will be throwing that ball on week one, and Will Levis will be slinging it. I'm excited to see it. But we appreciate you hanging out with us. Make sure you stay tuned because we're going to have a lot more draft coverage throughout the next coming weeks, and I hope to see you next time. Lighten up, and peace out. Thank you.